Hello folks, I'm Grant Baudelaire, and here we are in the home of Scott McCloud, author of Understanding Comics. He's allowed us to come into his home so that we might ask him a few questions about his book, his life, and his work. Hello, Mr. McCloud. Hi, Bart. How are you doing? I'm well. It's, uh, it's Grant. <laughs> Let's get started, shall we? What kind of feedback have you gotten from readers from your book, Understanding Comics? Well, Grant, the, the feedback's been really, really great. Um, I receive letters and emails, and people speak about me on blogs, uh, anywhere from grade school level up until the graduate level at universities. Um, it's really, some of the things they're saying is that understanding comics, the title of my book, go and rush out and get it right away, um, also increases their understanding of comics, but also builds in them an appreciation for comics as an art form. And that's really important, and there's a lot that goes into it, and uh, some of the concepts I speak about in understanding comics can be transferred to uh, you know, real life situations and understanding visual text all around us, all sorts of art. That's very interesting. You mentioned that it's been used in schools. Could you tell me, how is your book being used in the classroom? Well, um, <clears throat> I've heard that teachers are using it as a supplemental or secondary text to primary text, which are graphic novels, which are, there's just an explosion right now of graphic art and graphic novels, and um, my book really helps them understand, you know, the, the rich textuality that these graphic novels can offer. Hmm. And they, uh, you know, supplemental text, and they pair it up, and they look for these concepts and how they're being used in the graphic novels and in other sequential art. And, uh, you know, projects, papers, essays, they, kids make comments these days, it's great. Thank you, thank you. It makes me wonder, though, and perhaps some of our viewers as well, why should adults read graphic novels at all? Hmm. After all, they're just comics. And aren't comics for kids? Hmm. Well, Grant, if I may be supposed to correct you, comics aren't just for kids anymore. Hey, I'm not a kid anymore and I draw comics. But, back to the graphic novels. Well, recently there's been a lot of adaptations from classical texts turned into graphic novels. I can think of some of my friends who've done work on adaptations of Edgar Allan Poe, um, Lovecraft, Mark Twain, H.G. Wells, um, and for adults to read graphic novels, I think that more than anything, it will enrich their reading experience. You don't have to just read, you know, to learn something these days. You know, read for reading's sake, and maybe it'll bring them back to their days when they pulled out the old Superman or the Mad Comics. But uh, it also bridges a, a gap between the generations, and um, I think adults can learn a lot from graphic novels, and there's some really beautiful artwork to be seen as well. Well, apparently, somebody agrees with you, because graphic novels have ma made an explosion in the mass media. What do you make of this explosion in film, education, and everything else? Well, Grant, um... <clears throat> I think, you know, part of our, uh, you know, we say today that our culture has a very short attention span and it's growing even shorter. And we are a culture of immediate response and we, you know, we need multiple stimuli. And this, graphic novels, comic books, this whole genre um, offers that. And stimulating, it uh, works on multiple cognitive levels while reading the images is also while reading the print text. Um, it's becoming graphic novels and sequential arts becoming more uh, readily available to people of all ages and interest groups. Um, the genres alone of graphic novels and comic books has expanded exponentially in the last couple of years. We have romance, we have high adventure, 
um, adaptations of classic texts. Then we have your superheroes, what you may be used to calling comics are for kids, but oh no. Um, there are many layers of uh, textuality in these works, and you know, the academic world's finally catching up with the rest of us. I think many would agree. Now, you've organized the pictorial vocabulary, I say in quotes, of comics on any, or any art for that matter, in what you call the picture plane. Now, I'm a little confused. Can you explain how this works? Hmm. I can't explain, Mr. Baudelaire, but... That's, that's Baudelaire. Baudelaire? Thank I'll you. just refer to my text, Understanding Comics, because it needs visual representation, this question of yours. Here we have the picture plane, which represents all of the pictorial vocabulary. Over here, you can see, is the retinal edge. And over here is the conceptual edge. And as if you can notice, down here we have reality and photographs, an actual realistic depiction of image. And then we have over here the conceptual edge, where you can see that the, uh, the faces are a little more, you know, nondescript. Right. And see that language barrier right here? Ah, uh, yes. That's where the language will pick up for the lack of description um, on this uh, conceptual edge. And all art can be, uh, you know, fall somewhere on this plane. And it's useful for students in negotiating and critically evaluating visual text that they may come across, whether it be in um, advertisements or in their textbooks, um, at art museums. Um, you know, it's just a, just a little tool I put together. So Very interesting. Thank you for clearing that up for me. Well, um, I don't believe I have any other questions. I think that you've been a very, very good guest, and indeed we are guests in your home, and thank you for that. Thank you. Hey, um, well, it's been my pleasure having you, Grant, and you come back whenever time you want. Um, you know, all the press my book can get is great, and I want to spread the love of comics and cartooning and sequential art, and I want people to see it as an art form. And I really do think that my book, um, you know, I use comics to understand comics, to explain comics, and form follows content, and people have a really good, uh, you know, it's been great. So thank you very much for coming into my house, Grant. I really appreciate it. Oh, uh, you'll have to excuse me, Grant. That's my door. I'm expecting a guest. Thank you. I'll be right back.